For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. I'm Zoe and I'm reporting from Quito, Ecuador, where on Sunday, April 11th, 13 million Ecuadorians will have the opportunity to participate in the second round of presidential elections. The runoff elections will be held between Andres Arauz of the Progressive Union for Hope Coalition and Guillermo Lasso of the Conservative Creating Opportunities Party and Social Christian Party Coalition. With just five days out from the polls, We at People's Dispatch will take you through some of the key developments and things to look out for in the upcoming week leading to the elections. On Saturday, April 3rd, CONAI President Jaime Vargas made a historic announcement in support of Andres Arauz in the Union for Hope ticket. CONAI is the Confederation of Indigenous Nationals of Ecuador and is one of the largest and most important social forces in the history of Ecuador. Estoy aquí. Soy presidente del movimiento indígena del Ecuador y vine acá para respaldar la propuesta de nuestras nacionalidades y para decir, señor Andrés, desde ya presidente dijeron lo cierto. Así es. Todos compañeros y compañeras, sus propuestas tienen nuestro respaldo absoluto desde el movimiento indígena del Ecuador. En ese sentido, eso quiere decir, eso quiere decir, y eso me han dicho los presidentes, y aquí no podemos esconder, pase lo que pase, venga lo que venga, señor Andrés Arauz, economista, Tienes apoyo de todas las nacionalidades de la Amazonía ecuatoriana. The announcement, however, was met with backlash from some sectors of the indigenous movement who are allied with the Pachacutic Party. They will be casting a blank ballot in Sunday's polls in rejection of both candidates. However, Jaime Vargas is joined by a slew of other indigenous leaders across the country and organizations. While progressive candidate Andres Arauz has won support from key social sectors across the board, Guillermo Lasso has faced harsh backlash for his support and what many see as a continuation of the Lenin Moreno repressive neoliberal stance. In Guamote, on April 2nd, Guillermo Lasso attempted to hold a campaign rally. However, the indigenous community rallied and mobilized a road blockade to prohibit the entrance of his vehicle to the town. The community alleged that Guillermo Lasso had applauded and even supported the repressive actions of the Lenin Moreno government against the indigenous popular uprising in October of 2019. <laughs> Un muerto de Guamote, Edgar Yucaya. Por eso rechazamos al Guillermo Lazo, no es de Guamoteño. Fue asesinado gobernando con Lenin Moreno Guillermo Lazo. Por eso rechazamos a Lazo, porque a nuestros indígenas mataron. A las políticas neoliberales de este gobierno de Lenin Moreno que ha gobernado con Guillermo Lazo. A eso rechazamos. Aquí la derecha jamás. The brutal state repression during the uprising cost from as many as 7 to 11 lives and 1,500 were injured. The community of Guamote itself was hard hit by the state repression in October 2019 as they lost one of their own, Edgar Yucaya, to the repressive actions of the state. They declared the right wing is not welcome here and did not allow Lasso to hold his campaign events. Amid the electoral process, The COVID-19 pandemic has been raging across Ecuador. Confirmed cases and number of deaths have been swiftly increasing, and this led Lenin Moreno, the president of Ecuador, to decree a state of emergency in eight provinces of the country. This state of emergency includes measures which include the restriction on mobility, restriction on large gatherings, a curfew from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m., as well as other measures. Progressive candidate Andres Arauz has alerted that the state of emergency could constitute a threat to democracy. He explains that within the state of emergency, the president is afforded certain abilities which allow him to el modify electoral proceedings and protocols. He warns that in the context of constant threats to democracy which have taken place since the beginning of the process, 
that anything could happen and that people must remain alert on the electoral process in Ecuador. From People's Dispatch, we'll be with you all week following the latest developments in Ecuador and what's happening with the electoral process. Stay tuned and keep watching People's Dispatch.